fuck. Alright, so... Um, let's play something different today. Um... Already I might have made a mistake, but, you know, this is the way we learn, is by trying stuff out. Um, usually you close the diagonal to deal with the crazy nonsense that might happen after a bishop exchange. But, uh, we have a chance to try something today, so let's see how it goes. I have put some effort into studying Bishop Exchange, Joseki. So I'm not completely without resource. Let me close Discord. Discord is closed. Let me close. Okay, we're good. All right, let the games begin. Um. So, worthy of note is that if I defend this pawn directly, uh, should be Cray. So, let's see, how do we play this again? I think this is an occasion to play the Twin Gold Castle even though it has a weakness. So we're going to stop the craziest lines here. The one thing that is quite unusual about this um, is that usually bishop exchange and swinging rook I've not seen together. So I'm actually curious how this will go. Uh, so I pick this instead of... Um, I know I've been playing a lot of central file rook lately. Uh, I need some time to review um, master games first. So we're going to have this today. Um, so we defend our center pawn and are going to play the twin gold castle. And depending on whether this rook moves or not, this may affect um, where I choose to put the bishop. So here I'm defending this point, so now I can consider pushing this pawn. And, well, this was already defended. Um, yeah, it's... I don't know why I'm playing such aggressive stuff, but... Um, broadening our horizons a bit. I figure if the opponent does exchange the bishops, they hopefully have some idea what's going on, and we can learn from this. Um... But yeah, basically, I don't want this bishop to take any of these five pawns here. And now that that seems more or less settled, um, I can handle whether or not I want to advance my rook pawn. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's play a third file rook. Prevent a Yagra from forming here, and perhaps get the opponent to declare their intentions as to where they're building a castle.
All right, so I have some desire to play a twin gold castle and move my king to the right one. Um, do I think their castle's stable? I'm not sure. We're going to continue building something. A weakness of building the Twin Gold Castle is that, like, yeah, there are bishop drops to be concerned with. So I'll have to play with care, but I don't think I've messed up yet. Hmm. Yeah, in their position, I would want to play the same thing. Um... Hmm. Maybe I cannot refute this. Sure would be nice if I could, but I don't see a way to refute it. Let's use the silver. So pushing on the file just concedes the pawn. My opponent is fighting back on the third file, but I could bring the uh, battle here back to the second file at any moment. Also, I'd like to put my bishop on the same diagonal as this lance. Um, but there might be tactical reasons to put it on the same diagonal as this pawn. I don't think there are going to be, but there could someday be a tactical reason if the silver moves and this becomes fair game here, or if this moves. Like, I could have a fork, and it could be advantageous to hit this point. So... Not in a tremendous hurry to put my bishop down. Um, the other thing I considered is that perhaps I want my silver on this file. Um, so if tactics erupt, um, it'll be well positioned to attack. If I move the silver directly toward 5-5, five, five, they're just going to play the silver up in the pawn to 5-4. So, 
like right behind my pawn might be the best place to stash this. Although this invites a bishop drop on the diagonal. So maybe I don't want to commit to anything just yet. For all the mention I've made of this twin gold castle, I'm not really too anxious to complete it. Or not in a great hurry to complete it right now. Um, yeah, putting it on the square would we'll invite this pawn to advance. That could get interesting, because like, this is a weak diagonal. Um, hmm. Yeah, completing my castle is probably the best use of my time. As long as I'm not prone to a bishop drop, and I don't see that I am. It is unfortunate nothing's defending the rook. So if things get really complicated and I want to like pin this to their rook, my rook itself would be exposed. Um... So I do want to move the silver up. If they offer bishop exchange on this diagonal, I think I want to... Or if they put the bishop on the long diagonal, I want to counter and then move my knight up right behind my silver. Um, so if I push, if they push, takes... If they do silver, takes. I move my silver away and I've got a pin. And stuff gets interesting. Um, although if I exchange silvers, I'm prone to a fork back here, aren't I? Um, hmm. So my advancing the silver doesn't actually achieve anything. At least not in front of my rook. If I move it off to the side, there might be some point to it. Um, yeah, this is aggressive. So this kind of denies me the ability to push my fourth file pawn. Um, it should be really nice to push here. On the other hand, my rook is sitting pretty here. And um, not sure where my pieces are going next. But yeah, I was somehow concerned about them using this diagonal against me. So this is a defensive move. Possibly I've just given my opponent this tremendous initiative. Uh, where do I want my pieces now? Uh, I didn't. I really don't expect that rook to move. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing either, but I've taken a little bit of space. I want to push on the second file, but that's not so easy to do here.
I want to push on the edge file and bring my knight up, maybe even sack it here. Hmm, that doesn't look so sound. But more than anything, I want to know where their king's going, or if it's just going to sit in the center. Oh, they do offer this exchange anyway. <sighs> I'm surprised. Timing-wise, I kind of thought that, like, okay, well, yeah, I have not yet completed my twin gold castle. There is some merit to attacking right now, but... Um... Hmm. I didn't think they would offer a Rook Exchange. I still don't think they're offering a Rook Exchange. Um, Wait, are they really threatening Pontix Pawn in all circumstances? And the most notable circumstance is if I just drop my bishop to hit this pawn directly. Um, if I put my bishop here, they might put a bishop here to defend it. It's hard to defend. I drop a bishop here they could put well they can't put a bishop there i could take it um uh, so they don't have a way to harden this point if i put my bishop here it's just awkward for them they could put one behind my line but it has nowhere to go next I either move up or to the side. Yeah, I think this is the move. Because there are two weaknesses in a chain here. And both of them are hard to defend. I guess the one thing I didn't factor in is after I collect the pawn, just how do I evaluate the position? 
Hmm. Well, I wanted to attack, and I got to attack, so from that perspective, um, that was good. Um, but how do I evaluate this? Maybe this isn't the smartest attack ever. I do like one thing about it, and that's that I'm able to attack this pawn after I take here. Like, a pawn takes, then I push, sacking it, knight takes, knight, bishop takes on a3. So, that's pretty appealing. Um, I guess what I've not factored in is, like, there's other stuff that can happen here. Like, if they do move the knight, and pawn takes, and they move the knight again. Um, my bishop's sitting in the middle of the board. Maybe I sack to take the knight. A pawn takes, bishop takes afterward, and I'm hitting this pawn. No, I'm not, because there's this pawn in the way. So I might have blockaded by bishop if they sack here. Um, they might have to step back or forward somehow to unclog things. Yeah, pawn takes, knight up, silver up, and then threatening to push this pawn up, and then they put a bishop here or something. I don't know. Like, there are two weaknesses here. I didn't see any weaknesses anywhere else, so I just went for it here. Um, but maybe this is not right. Or maybe I'm inviting myself to sack the bishop here. Silver takes, pawn takes, and stuff gets interesting. Could be. Um... I'm so tempted to attack just because their king's right in the center, but it can easily move out of the center. So if I sack to attack, I better have a continuation. That said, I really want to do bishop takes and then push the pawn and see how far I get. I'm just too curious. Curiosity killed the cat, but still. Um, actually, if knight here, pawn takes. If knight moves, I pawn push again. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, this knight to 6-5 is not going to crush me. I might push the pawn here, though, first. I might change the analysis a bit. <laughs> they get the rook out of dodge. Or... They have something else in mind. This... What? How does this improve their position? I'm confused. Pawn takes, silver takes, bishop takes. They move or drop something to here. Or my bishop's pinned. So... Instead, what we're looking at is bishop takes, silver takes, pawn takes, but then the knight can sack if I push again. So really, we're just talking about they've defended the weak point, and if I'm greedy, I'm going to take the pawn right now. I think we know what the answer to that is. I think we know if I'm greedy or not. A little greed is a good thing. Do they have a way to harden this point? Could drop a bishop to defend it. And now that might actually be a legitimate defense. Um, I 
But yeah, pawn takes, silver takes, rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes. They have the move. They can rook drop. I can rook drop check. Um, king chases my rook. My bishop's under attack. But if the king chases the rook, I take this gold. The rook takes my bishop. Um, check with the gold. No. Or I drop the gold over here to pursue the king. I still have a silver in hand. Oh, that's the other thing I like about this, is that I get silver out of it. So even if somehow I lose the bishop at the end of some combination, at some point I did gain a silver. <sighs> um... The other fun thing, pawn takes, silver takes, bishop takes, and if they move or otherwise attack this, I drop another pawn to defend my bishop. That's playable. Um, and it's like, their gold could come up and then I have a pawn take again. So, bishop takes is kind of fun. I don't have to allow a rook exchange, although it looks useful to allow a rook exchange. Um, hmm. So what am I most concerned about? Pawn takes, silver takes, bishop takes, bishop drop back here, move up the rook, bishop's trapped. They can't, well, they could pile on, but then my rook's defended, so instead they might do gold up to hit my bishop first. Um, I could take, they take my rook. I have a gold in hand, I have a silver in hand. It's, well, and I take this pawn surrounding their king. Oh, I guess what they've banked on is pawn takes, silver takes, and a pawn drop. Which looks interesting, too. And a lot easier. Yeah, why didn't I start there? It's less profitable. Um... Because the silver moves aside, and I don't have a way to follow up. Yeah, I like this attack I get against the king. Let's pursue this. Whether I take with the rook, or whether I take with the bishop, this looks interesting. Um... Yeah, bishop takes looks like the most interesting play here. I... Bishop takes, bishop drop, pawn drop, bishop takes. Ah, <sighs> bishop drop forking my rook, rook moves away, yeah, that's not it, bishop takes, gold takes, bishop takes gold, rook takes rook, bishop takes the pawn here, um,
Uh, this just looks too interesting. I can't resist it. Thank Yeah, I saw this. I don't... That's hard to reason about. I think I have to take it. So this is check. And then we take over here with check. So they have only a rook and a bishop to block checks with. So we're going to smoke out the king. Maybe I needed to surround it first, but I didn't want to allow time to defend stuff. Um, Sanjudio. This looks the lightest way to continue an attack. Uh, wait a second. That doesn't quite work. That wasn't my intent. Um, okay. I guess we'll accept this for what it is. Uh, that was a pretty wild game. Oh, yeah, let's take a look at the comment. Uh.
Yeah, good game. Um, <laughs> sharp positions as requested. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, there was no uh, a shortage of sharp positions here. Ah, uh, uh, I liked that I could sack bishop or two generals. Uh, sure. Yeah. All right, cool. So yeah, we could do the analysis this way too. This way, folks viewing the stream can... This is a little less convenient for most people. Um, I'm sorry, for the opponent. Although they could indicate things on the 81 dojo board, but yeah, with the board maxed out like this. Uh, yeah, this is exciting. I do wonder. Uh, this has got to have some theory. Um... Perhaps I pushed the envelope a bit much in allowing this. Um, I'm always pushing the envelope, but this I might have pushed a bit too far. Um, looked forward to seeing some of this. Hey, welcome. Yeah, I wonder about this. Um, I was really looking forward to this kind of wild tactical thing here. And not sure how this turns out. Um, but with the king in the center, I think anything could happen. So, yeah. And this is a line, right? Where, like, you take here, I take there. Yeah. Um, I know I saw Hidechi comment about it, but, uh... Yeah, it definitely looks scary. I think Hidechi did briefly touch on it once, but um, yeah, instead we got the main game line, which is pretty exciting too. Uh, so, let's see. Oh yeah, so I decided that like finally I've covered my pawns here. So I decided this is a good time for me to try to put some pressure on the opponent and see if they can declare what their intentions are, where they're going to castle, are they going to open any files for the rook. Um, it just felt like a decent timing for me to expose my rook since I think I've got uh, a lot of squares covered. Uh, I do not have the fourth file covered, but I thought this is a reasonable time to push. This does also kind of carry a threat of advancing it yet again, so maybe this indirectly threatens some bishop activity. I'm not totally sure. Maybe this is just crazy. But yeah, this looks reasonable. This does defend against the file and leaves open the possibility of the rook countering on the file, which it did in the game. Um, so yeah, that makes sense. I decide, okay, I'm going to calm down a little bit. Um, so I've got these three still covered. And I intend to move my golds to cover the rest of these soon. I'm always afraid of a bishop drop behind my pawns, but um, I think if I just play some solid moves and indicate that like this is my castling idea, um, if I do that, I think I'll be okay. And meanwhile, I'm still waiting for, like, is this king going toward the rook? Is this king staying in the center or going to the right? I figure I have some time to shuffle my generals around before um, an attack happens. Um, so, yeah. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a similar question when uh, in one of my teaching games versus Destiny. Uh, this third file 
on is always scary. Um, I, think, I think your move is fine. I just didn't quite expect it. So I'm not sure why I'm typing it out because you are listening to, but um, yeah. I guess for the benefit of other spectators here. Yeah, 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 that's the problem, is that this pawn is kind of hard to defend. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure that there's a lot of written theory about this opening. So, like, here, I've played this and played my rook over. Um, not sure that there's a lot of documented theory about this. So that's kind of why I wanted to try it out. Um, just to get a better sense of, like, is this even a thing? If I leave open the possibility of this bishop exchange, what are all the fun and interesting things that might happen? So, um, this looks interesting. I might play this myself. Like, this rook defense... Um, it bring it really begs the question of am I attacking on this line or am I attacking on this line? And I need to make a decision soon, I think, because uh, the only things that I can do without making a decision are just shuffling my generals around until I decide which pawns I can move safely without hanging stuff. Uh, hello. So yeah, it looks fine, I think. I don't see any problem with this. There's still a question of where you're going to castle, but, um, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, I decide... Well, yeah, here I'm trying to actually coax you into pushing one of your pawns, I guess. Um, because if none of the pawns move, then, you know, my silver does work its way up the board. Um, oh, yeah, so we're talking about this. That's interesting. So we're talking about bishop somewhere. Oh, after the silver moves. Okay, yeah. Yes, yeah, so after I play this, yeah, we're talking, can this pawn push? Um, hmm. I did briefly think about this. Um, yeah, I think you're right, though, that this runs into the same complications we had during the game. Um, so, it's just, I don't know. What makes this so fun uh, is that I can actually activate all of my pieces, and your king is still sitting here. So, yeah, uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's a bit early. Actually, yeah, there's not a whole bunch of people spectating in this chat room. I'm not sure why I'm typing, but... Um, yeah, I think um, it might be playable, but it doesn't look easy. Yeah, because I, I'm not, hmm. It would be nice if the rook could counter effectively on this file. Um, but until I hang something, it's kind of difficult. Yeah, so... I don't see a way to defend this so well. Um, I guess maybe there's this? And maybe starting chase, start to chase down the bishop? Um, maybe that's a thought. Yeah, I wonder how that works. 
because you still have the bishop in hand. Um, maybe this bishop drop's not so bright. Okay, he says the pawn push. Yes, you're... <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I am threatening to push the pawn and start exchanging stuff. Hmm. I wonder if there's other things I can do here. Although, or earlier, this still looks decent for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the hard part is figuring out where do you castle. I wonder at what point it became difficult to figure out the whole, like, where does the king castle thing. So, yeah, the, there was a couple flexible moves, and then at this point we've kind of committed. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, I see. That makes sense. Yeah, that deals with attacks from the head. Although, like, right now I'm not attacking on the head of this. But still, it is a castle, and it's a pretty solid one. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of room behind the castle for a bishop drop to suddenly show up. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, is that a rook exchange did happen. So I'm not sure that it's necessarily... Uh, yeah, I'm thinking this pawn push might have been what invited a rook exchange. Um, although this is kind of what you're building up to. And Maybe sometimes you're okay against a rook exchange, but this king's not in the right spot right now. So that's the one thing that just kept encouraging me to continue attacking here is I saw, hey, there's a king on 5-1. Um, so even if somehow I lose my bishop for just one general instead of two, um, this might still be fine. Uh... Yeah, well, yeah, so I guess we'll take a look. So if we do this, let's say, well, I guess maybe you're afraid I'm going to do something here. I'm not sure, like, my idea was to push this, but are you afraid that I'm going to do something right now? Um, I think you have time to activate your pieces as long as you don't open the lines right away. Um, so maybe it's, maybe you were afraid that I was going to, I don't know. I was optimistic. I was trying to attack something, but I didn't see an immediate breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely does incite panic in the opponent when they see this pawn coming. Yeah. Um... Right. Yeah, it is concerning. Um, but perhaps you're maybe too concerned, or maybe there's some other way. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Um, well, the other fun thing... Where was it? So if we have this bishop drop. Um, you have a bishop too, right? So, I'm not sure where we end up at the end of all of this, but, yeah, this, this could be interesting. So, yeah, perhaps I need to come up with a better way to attack. 
because uh, sure looks like my seventh file attack's been rebutted. And perhaps what this means is that instead of waiting around a while, oops, uh, sorry. Uh, let's see, I was going to try to look at, where was it? <laughs> yeah, oh, right, so did I ever have a chance to push this pawn? Yeah. During the game, I did debate whether I need to push this immediately. Um, and maybe this is what I need to do. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not seeing that. We know maybe you are. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, maybe this is what I needed to try earlier. Um, and the idea is we just open the file, and then we don't have to worry about whether or not I'm going to have a pawn in this file, because uh, my pawn's no longer on the file. Yeah, the problem is um, it's hard for me to attack. So, yeah, that's, maybe this is what I should have done, or maybe something else I did was just wrong, but yeah, this, yeah, it looks interesting. Um, and if I try to do something crazy with my rook, you're generals can hold it off, so yeah, it's tricky. Maybe this is why it's not so popular of an opening. Oh! Well, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> um, hmm. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, hmm. What happens instead of the silver, put the bishop on 8-5? Uh, yeah, we can look at that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so here I was kind of, well, I guess two thoughts. What I was thinking is that my rook could retreat, and that actually hurts quite a bit the more I look at it. Um... The other thought is, can I get away with this? I don't think I get away with this. Hmm. <laughs> oh, well now I'm curious. Oh, I've got this morbid curiosity. Um, just how bad is this, I wonder? Is this just insane? Yeah, so... Yeah, we've got that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so this is kind of threatened. Oh, but I guess... Um, hmm. Maybe this is just nonsense. Because um, this rook does escape the corner. Um, hmm. Yeah, this looks kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I survived this. <laughs> This uh, looks like I've just given up a bishop for nothing. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, you don't need to start that way, right? You can do this one first, right? Um, yeah. So maybe the bishop sack is not so smart. So backing up a bit. Um, yeah, I guess we need to like just let this happen. So this is sad. Yeah. Then we got the pawn drop, and we'll have to find some way back into the game. Um, and maybe it's not so bad, but. It sure feels awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you do about the bishop. It's on a decent square. It's really hard to evict. Um, Gota's bishop is serving a dual responsibility of protecting the pawn and defending this square. And that would, like, if I could not drop here, they could just move the knight out or start moving other pieces this way. But um, So, yeah. Um, right. So this is not so easy for them to deal with. Plus this already, uh, yeah. Maybe the pawn drop itself might be mistimed. Um. Like, the pawn drop is such a tempting move, but other than kicking the rook on a file where it's already not doing very much, um, I don't see what the pawn drop affects here. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. That, I mean, this is generous, isn't it? Is this not generous? Because then I take the bishop and I'm going to take some more pieces next. I guess this pawn's not defended, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just a little bit too slow. So I think instead... Are really... Yeah, we need to do this pawn push earlier. Um, well, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, no, you have a point. Maybe it's not too slow. It is slow, but maybe not too slow. Uh, so the rook basically has to move here. Uh, guess this attempts to win a tempo. But then maybe there's this silver drop? I don't know. Um... That's a pretty sharp position. So the reason I don't, yeah, the reason I don't like move this rook somewhere else is because then this 
uh, lance drops, and I can no longer break the pawn in one move. Um, so instead, this looks a bit... I don't know. I think this could work for both players. Like, there's a lot that seems to favor each player here. So, um, yeah, I think this is even somehow, despite everything being on fire. Um, looks fun. Yeah. So, yeah, it would have been nice, like, actually this king on 5-1 seems better defended than my own king. So, my king might be in trouble, but that's nothing new for me. Um, yeah, it looks complicated at any rate. So, yeah, pushing this pawn might be okay, but I sense that somehow earlier, um... There might be a better resource anyway for Gota. Um, my attack might have been a bit speculative somehow. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This, this pawn push on the edge just seems unnecessary. Um, so, let's see. What was I looking at next here? Just collecting the pawn. And... Like this sort of thing. Also, maybe this someday. Like, that other line looks fun, but um, this might be a bit uh, saner. Although, there is a problem here, isn't there? There is a problem here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to make of that. I do like taking pieces. But, yeah, I don't know that I would dive into this here either. So even though it's fun to hit this bishop. Um, uh, what was I looking at here? Oh, the pawn is blocking the bishop. So, before we... Oh. Yeah, this is maybe where I'd want to start the analysis. Um, right, so you could push the knight, and I could push here. And this might not be as crazy as all the other stuff we were just looking at, but um, it looks sane enough to me. Um... Okay. What's the next move, I wonder? Knight takes... Um, I guess we'll take your check. King takes. Ooh, this is fun. Yes, I want a king. King me. All right. Um, well, yeah, this is the threat. So now that I've taken the piece that was in front of my rook, um, I mean, another one might go down in front of my rook, but yeah, still, it's nice that I'm attacking toward the king. So... I'm not sure. Like, their idea in the first place was to play the twin gold castle and tuck the king away to safety. And, yeah. Yeah, this looks painful. So, um, I guess the fact that I have such a variation here, wild as that is, um, I think all that means is that um, uh, maybe reserve uh, the pawn drop until later. I don't know. 
like a rook attacks vertically um and you've got all these squares covered so uh yeah i am kind of threatening to do a pawn drop i mean yeah you could do it in defense that's possible maybe best actually yeah you might have a point um but either way it seems best to not block the bishop until i don't know you're ready to attack um that's my guess that's kind of my feeling here um how did we get here oh, so I yeah i did this and uh yeah we looked at a sane line because i'm defending against all the drops um yeah there's another thought is that if you are going to put the pawn in the file like this could be another opportunity to do it um and then i have to go back and defend this and i've got a pawn in hand but um You've got a solid position. It takes a while for you to get your pieces active, but um, yeah, this is a different game for sure. Oh, yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, your idea with the high bishop drop is to try to um, get something out of the position. And maybe my crazy bishop drop might not work, but we still haven't found a line with this yet. Oh, what was wrong? Oh, here. This? This maybe? Um, is this what we're talking about? Yeah. Tactics are fun. Hmm. I mean, it might, might still be okay somehow. I don't know. Well, actually, no. It, it's probably not okay. Because, um, yeah, then I can collect the lance. In worst case. Uh, yeah, so that didn't quite fit there. Fun thought, but... Yeah, maybe this bishop drop is unsound, but who knows. I'll have to put this into an engine afterward to figure out what exactly what was going on. Yeah, this, is, this was my whole idea, is that I was just going to get my pawn off the file. Or rather, in this variation, this is the idea. Um, I didn't actually play this in the game, but this might have been appropriate. And then, yeah, it looks... Well, Senta has some initiative. Um, Gota has a more solid position. Because, like, I can't complete any castle that I'd like to build here. But, um... Yeah. I mean, you've got this castle, right? And you just play this up, that's fine. I've got this, this sort of thing. Um, well, how do I do this? It might actually, no, I'm not sure if it matters. But yeah, I've got this, you've got this, it's fine. Uh, yeah, Anaguma the silver. <laughs> At some point, yeah, eventually we find a way to develop pieces without losing everything. But yeah, this looks plausible and reasonable and such. And for whatever theoretical value that has there, I'm not sure that it looks a lot better at all. 
I mean, I know you said it's just looking slightly better at the percenta, but like, I'm not seeing how I press anything here. It's just a really hard position for both players. Um, if I move my silver, uh, this 8 8 square becomes a focal point for this bishop, to, for them to drop a bishop. Um, so, yeah. I have to come up with something super clever here. I kind of like Gotez's position, just because it seems a little easier to play without this hole. And with the king slightly safer tucked away. <laughs> yep. yep. That's uh, why we practice. Uh, gotta learn. Although... Did I really learn a whole lot here? I'm not sure. If I'd played a more patient opening, perhaps we would have learned more, but then we would have had we would have been stuck playing like fourth file rook. Um we still haven't gotten all the lessons on fourth file rook yet, so I opted for something more exciting today. Uh yeah, it's fun to explore all these things once in a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely appreciated getting chances to play against Destiny. As spooky as that could be sometimes, because he's a very strong player. Um, Yeah, we need stronger players here. Folks that can tell us to play right moves. Um, Like, some of my... Uh, two or three games ago, I played this center file rook... Um, in a completely unsound way. And after the game, during post-game analysis, my opponent and I had difficulty figuring it out. Um, then Pawn Hub corrected us. And he's like, no, no, no. The, what I played was just unsound, and here's uh, how the opponent plays against it. And I need to push my 5-5 five, five pawn, or I need to push my center file pawn up to 5-5. Five, five. If I'm going to have any chances at an advantage otherwise, it's just equal. Um, yeah, stronger players have experience and uh, wisdom. But yeah, we get to practice anyway. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Um, so, let's see, what else is there? Oh, yeah, I mean, so this game, I briefly looked at, like, work takes. And we were both looking at this during the game. Uh, for spectators benefit, I think this is what we were looking at. Um, was the Spurk drop? And I was looking at the Spurk drop up here. And, um, this gets fairly crazy. Uh, hang on. Wait, did I... Wow. I think I misread something in all of this. So, well, it looks winning for me. I'm not sure. Um, when do I play here? I guess I have to take this, right? Um... Maybe it still looks better. Uh, two golds for a rook. Yeah, if you're counting it this way, yes. Um, but uh, I wonder how secure is my castle? Uh, yeah, no, maybe you're right. Oh, uh, yeah, we had emote early. 
or on during we had the emotes only mode on during the game now we're in post game analysis uh, um but yeah this maybe maybe i am winning here again this is where we need stronger players to tell us what the heck's going on uh Yeah, I guess my golds can hold my castle together. Um, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I guess you're right. So... Yeah. So this crazy stuff I was trying to read out during the game didn't need to be read, I guess. Um... <laughs> I guess so, huh. I'm, I'm surprised that, like, there isn't some way here to... But anyway, yeah, I guess if I am winning here, I guess that is what it is. Huh. How did that happen? I mean, yes, my attack is nice, but is it really that nice? Yeah, maybe the tempo spent on moving the rook is the fatal thing. Yeah, you're down a silver. So when I sack the bishop for two golds, then I have three generals for a bishop. Um, so yeah, that's probably why I was so confused. It's because I forgot... I'd actually get three pieces for this bishop. Although I'm sacking the rook at the end, too. But still. Um, three generals with a wide-open king is... That's a decent exchange for me, at the very least. Uh, so, yeah, against this, like... Uh, maybe there was some way to slow it down. Yeah, I will certainly ask the robot overlords. That makes sense. I mean, one thing I looked at briefly during the game was this, but yeah, the robot overlords will find all the complications. It's up for us to find the general strategy and the overlords after the game to tell us what happened. Um, but yeah, this pawn push, I guess, is mistimed, <laughs> to put it mildly. That seems to be the issue here. Seems to be a mild case of... Um, Pushing the pawn just, like, lines up two weaknesses on the same diagonal. And I already control the square in front of this pawn, too, so the bishop can't go there. So, yeah, that's probably what did it in. Um, yeah, that's quite an adventure. Yes, uh, this is the final position. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try to play something a little more sound, a little more theoretical next time. Um, no guarantees, but I will ask the overlords what they think of this and see if they can recommend some earlier deviation. Because something I did was kind of weird. I mean, yeah... We didn't see the standard bishop exchange, Joseki stuff, but yeah, thanks for the game. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's good to practice. Um, so it's good. Also, to welcome, like, if you are going to welcome the sharp positions, just go for it, right? Unless, maybe this is unsound. I forget the theoretical value of all this, but, yeah, I, like, maybe that's not it. I need to ask the overlords, and or I need to ask stronger players, just, like, is this really playable? I would have done it. But maybe it's on sound. Maybe I'm trying to goat you into some kind of mistake. 
uh, uh, yeah, of note for spectators is like, suppose I dub this, uh, there's this drop. So that's why I push the silver off to the side here. Um, just for those who haven't seen it before. Opening theory in Shogi is different than chess opening theory. Um, so in chess, there's said to be a branching factor about six candidate moves per position, as evidenced by engines having churned through some countless number of positions. Uh, the average branching factor seems to be six. In Shogi, because of the drop rule, I'm not sure what the branching factor on average is, and probably varies quite a bit from engine to engine. So you're not asking about engines, you're asking about openings, but I'm just saying the number of candidate moves per position is pretty damn high in Shogi. So yeah, there are some very sharp tactical lines. Um, so I don't know all of them, and that's... Uh, uh, occasionally I do essay stuff like this, um, so either you go for the gold and take the sharpest stuff here, or uh, you just try to calm things down and uh, work through the calmer stuff. And the reason I wasn't in the mood for the calm fourth file rook stuff to today um, is because I'm still, as are we all, uh, watching lessons from Shogi Harbor about uh, various four file rook strategies and the lines I'm most curious about we've not gotten to yet. So um, maybe once we get there I'll start playing this again. We'll see. But yeah, the, there's some really sharp stuff. A lot of the sharpest stuff, even according to like very high level players, uh, is having to do with this double static rook joseki. Uh, this is sharp. So, um, yeah. There's this. Uh, I mean, there's also this sort of stuff. Uh, I don't know. Like, all these kinds of lines are sharp. Um, so... In general, I play openings where I get to play the rook off to the side and then just quietly tuck my king into the right corner. And uh, these tend to be less memorization heavy and more creative um, uh, than the static openings, uh, or the static rook. But yeah. I'm not the strongest player out there. I'm an amateur. So ask other players too. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for this interesting teaching game. Um, yeah, I know there's a lot to look at. We only looked at a small fraction of it all, but um, yeah, this we probably looked at enough to understand the basic gist of what happened. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, a, a poorly timed attack. Like, if the king had been over in this corner first, and you had then, if I gave you time to break this open, and I think I did, but I'm not sure, then, like, this uh, opening of the file might have been fine, but with the king in the center of the board, I just couldn't resist. So, yeah, thanks for game, thanks for analysis.